What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. We're going to be talking about the last and final episode of the book of Boba Fett. And Brian, although I enjoyed this episode because of some of the things that they showed and some of the action sequences and stuff like that, I was disappointed overall in how this season went down because if you listen to our show and and hear what we said in terms of what will happen, especially what I thought would happen, a lot of it didn't happen. A lot of the stuff that we thought they wouldn't do, like kill Cap Bane or Cap, what was it, Cap Ban? Cap Bane. Cap Bane. They seemingly killed them off, it looks like. Maybe? I don't think so. Okay. I still don't like the scene, but I don't think you should. Yeah, yeah. I think the way they, they, they left that, it was... Very underwhelming. Um, Brian, let's talk about it. Let's let's uh, discuss what this final season, uh, this final episode, how it was received, how you liked it, um, and where do we go from here? Um, your thoughts on... To me, this was like, if I've never seen Michael Jordan play before, and you told me, yo... Michael Jordan was the man and you finally showed him and I see him playing for the Washington Wizards. Then I'm not that, you know, I, I see the, 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 the skill, but I don't see the reputation. I don't see the greatness. And this season seemed to be all over the place. I didn't like the fact that they tried to make the mod squad or whatever the, that, that group was they try to give them like moments to make them dope. And it wasn't, they, tr- it seems like they tried too hard with this episode to make it dope. And they, 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 it really puts into question whether or not we're going to get a second season, because it seemingly seems that this, um, the way it ended is that that's it. He accomplished his goal. So where do we go from here? I, I don't think, in my opinion, I don't think we get a second season. Um, but what did you think of this episode and where do, you, where do we go from here? I think we're in pretty broad agreement. Uh, I think coming into this show, look, we talked about the number one question. Could this character, which was a cult legend, but really a cameo character that had been given kind of a mythology in the comics, uh, away from the big screen, could it anchor its own show? And I yeah. think this season would kind of say no, because this show was kind of at its best when Boba Fett was not at the center of what was happening. Yeah, um, it's funny you use you use the the, the, the basketball analogy of, of Michael Jordan. I I was actually going to say this show was like the John Starks of, of <laughs> Disney Plus, which is like. If you take the highest points of this show, it's all star level. It's the reason why you keep rooting for this guy and giving 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 the show the ball. Yeah. But there was a lot of two for eighteen in here too. Yeah. And and <laughs> you know, it's just it just was so up and down and so inconsistent that like at the end of the day, you're like, I don't think this show justified its existence to be its own thing. Yeah. Uh and I, I, I have to say that in retrospect, I still don't understand Ming Na Wen's comment that we would understand the structure of this show by the end. Cause I didn't feel any more in the know. And if anything, this finale seemed to suffer from what is becoming a pattern with these Disney shows, which is they go to the kind of cliche all out battle in the final episode and kind of rush to wrap everything up. Yeah. And they, they need to take note that the best finale they did was the one that really didn't do that at all. And that was the Loki finale. But we yeah. see it in the Hawkeye. We saw it in Falcon. We saw it a little bit in Wanda and we see it again here. We, like you said, there's some good action. And we'll talk about it. There's some good action in this episode. There's some compelling action in this episode. Yeah. But this show left itself no outs 
and then try to wrap everything up so like the pikes are done spoiler alert like I, it just is like what did we just do and, and to your point like i don't think cad bane's dead but like why bring him in in episode six only to then have this showdown in episode seven where he ostensibly dies on screen it's like there's no point to that there's no point mm. to that and even even having mando and grogo in this episode it's like why like Grogu obviously was the MVP, right? He comes back and <laughs> just just crushes, but it's like they clearly wouldn't have won this conflict without him. But yeah. he had no connection to Boba Fett throughout the show at all. So why yeah. is he here, like saving the day? It just it was too disjointed for me. Um, and yeah, I, I'm fine with Boba Fett being a part of this broader universe, but I don't need a season two focused on just his character. Yeah. Um... What 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 had me a little bit upset too is when he said, "I don't I don't think we're fit for this." I mean, I was like, I would have been like, "Yo, you had us go through all this to say that you don't think we're fit for this sort of thing anymore." It's like, damn. It's like, what well, what was the point of all this if you if if you're feeling this way now? And and you know, he wanted to do this. Uh, but let's talk about some of the things uh, that was sort of weird. It's like they sort of made they tried to make like statements or try to set us up for some great moments that never came and had me wondering why those those things were set up that way like for example um the decisions to stay in the burnt down ca cantina um was like okay she terrible want <laughs> so like why do we want to stay here and just because she gave us a little small speech i forget what that was um and he's like we'll stay and it's like okay obviously i thought there was gonna be a payoff to the strategy of why they needed to stay there but there was none really um yeah i thought that was the moment where he could have been like listen he's like i know when you're supposed to hide out in the ruins in the trash because we know he did that and empire strikes yeah. that but no he just got conned into it basically yeah. by the mod squad kind of saying like you know, this is, this is the spot we need. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm with you. Like immediate bag tactics, but yeah. Yeah. And then, um, the, listen, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the, what's the dude's name? I forget the, the, the mayor's, uh, uh, yeah, he's like, he's like consort. So like, yes, he's like, yes. like the, he's, he's not bid Fortuna, but he kind of, yes. you know, has a little, yes. yeah, that's the role he's sort of playing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He, he was, he was fantastic. And, that scene was dope. Um, when they came out flying and shooting, that was dope. You know, yeah, and that then, was fun. then they landed and I'm like, why did you guys didn't just stay up in the air and start hiding? You know what I'm saying? It was just, I don't Maybe know. Maybe inflation is high on tattoo. Gas prices. <laughs> it can't power, it can't power the pack. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't I don't get a lot of the decision making that went into creating this episode and just sort of making that decision of ending this in this season. You know, it's just uh, very, very disappointing. Although I liked the episode overall, I just didn't get what they were going for in this because it seemed like they were setting up a lot of great things for Boba Fett, but he never really. I guess showed up to be that guy that um, they were setting him up to be in terms of his skill, his thinking, his political aspirations, I guess, to be the guy running the show in Tatooine and how he had all these uh, uh, factions of, of, of houses that he had to sort of maneuver. And, and, and we never saw any of that. And, they just, for me, they just rushed everything. Uh, what did you, th I, to me, I'm sort of getting tired of baby, uh, a Grogu standing there and putting out his hand and saving the day. It's, it's getting old for me. Your thoughts? Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's why I said, and he didn't really belong in a way that, you know, he belongs so much to the world of the Mandalorian and he doesn't really belong in this show. And so it just felt like a cheat code to be yeah. like, wait, we need the good, we need to get the good guys some heavy artillery. 
like, oh, here comes this little guy and he's going to just start, you know, he could put the rancor to sleep and he can kind of do whatever he wants. And he's now like a master of, of, of some of these powers. But no, like, let's backtrack to what you're, you're saying before thematically. Yeah, I don't think the show ever figured out what it wanted to be. I mean, I think, and the sad part is, I think the blueprints were there. They just didn't carry them through. So if we were to believe that he wanted to be this daimyo, this reformed bounty hunter termed crime boss, yeah. why are we not tapping into, you know, why are we not tapping into the genre? I mean, you got The Godfather, you got Goodfellas, you got The Sopranos. There's all sorts of DNA that you could have applied to this show. I mean, you you could have had him sending Fennec around town, whacking rivals and doing, uh, you basically could have made that type of show yeah. if you wanted to remake this character. But they kind of like started down the path and didn't go that way. And then they wanted to give him this more noble sort of native backstory, which then, what was the payoff of that? The fact that he had a gappy stick at the end that he could use in the fight with Cad Bane. Like that's pretty <laughs> weak for, for all of that history, right? That yeah, they gave yeah. us of the Tuscan. Like yeah. I kept waiting for the Tuscans to show up because I was like, he's got all these helpful local allies. Are we supposed to believe that every Tuscan Raider was wiped out? Cause I would think that's the people that would come to help him more than yeah. any other based upon yeah. what we know, but yeah. never saw them. Uh, and then the flip side was, Episode six, I think, was in some ways agonizing because I really felt like the Cobb Van Cad Bane intro was the other route this show could have gone, which was the 60s Western, right? The idea of gunslingers, rivals, this is an old West type of town, yeah. and only one of these guys is coming out of this town on top. They didn't do that for seven episodes. And yeah. so it, it just felt very uneven to where you got to the end and you're like, as you said, what is this guy great at? He's not really great at anything. He's not really great at fighting. He's not really great at leading. He's not really great at strategy. Like, what is he great at? Like, what is he, like, why should anyone actually follow him power before him or follow him? And, and I, I don't think we're left with that. And the last, the last thing is there was a moment where I thought this show was not going to save itself, but I thought they were going to go a certain way. And then they even didn't do that, which was, he has the exchange with Cad Bane and Bane tells him you're a killer. Like he tells him like, you can't like, this is what you are before he loses. And then they had that scene where all the, with the pikes and all the rival leaders were getting whacked. And I so wanted that to be Boba that was doing that because then I would have said like, Oh, so this guy, he spent the whole season trying to be noble and trying to be honorable. But then in the end, he went back to his dark roots and I might've been interested. That might've hooked me to see where we were going. And then I realized it was Fennec doing all that work. And I was like, Oh, so no, it's not him. It's just his henchman. It would have been a great, uh, uh, I guess, sort of payoff to what Fennec had said earlier in the season where, you know, sometimes it's better to rule by fear. Exactly, um, and, and 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 they just didn't listen. This I don't fault. I loved his acting. I loved his performance, um, Morrison's performance. Yeah. Um. So this isn't his fault. Um. It's a it's a writer's. It's it. You got to blame. Fav, I mean, Favreau and Filoni, as good as they are, wrote a lot of this stuff. This was a writing foul. I mean, like they, the, the character setup, as you say, it's. The you know the actors have to go out and execute, but what was given to them was not really great. Winning, yeah, playbook, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I expected this to be great, and it, it just turned out to be regular TV sort of situation, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I like. I, I just say I, I I like the rancor, like the rancor in action. I that was dope. Enjoyed. That was dope. That when he came on and then he's on top, that was dope. Like he moved well. He looked. He looked fierce. Like I was, I was, I was digging that. I actually thought the. I was trying to figure out: are those were those battle droids the same ones from Phantom Menace, or were they souped up? Because I felt like I had in my head like Liam Neeson and Evan, you and McGregor like carved those dudes up. Mm -hmm. And then in this episode, like the dark saber had like no effect on their shields, and I was like, these must be like another level. But they were kind of yeah. scary. Like they were kind of cool. So that's what I mean. Like there's there are elements here that were fun to watch, but. 
it just didn't, it just didn't pay off where we had gotten to. And I'm not even sure that where we had gotten to like had any real chance of, as we said, landing a plane even last week. So no, I guess, I mean, like I said, like I would definitely tell people like watch Mandalorian and then watch episodes five and six of this show. You're good. Like, I don't think you need the rest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's a shame too. But don't man. miss episode five and six. Don't miss that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a shame. And another thing um, that's it's like it, it sort of makes me think like, yo, what were they thinking? Mandalorian tells when he's betrayed. Mandalorian tells him it was the right decision that the other houses made in order to betray you. And I think Boba Fett agreed. And him knowing that he still had his, I guess, team out in the open, like ready to fail. (laughs) And it's like, it really didn't, um, it it, it was just poor execution and, and, and just, I think, uh, I, I I would like to, to 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 know what were they thinking when they were writing this and and what, what it's just I'm just baffled by the great stuff that we've got in the Mandalorian. You couldn't do something at least as good or better for this character who has a lot more history and more admiration from fans, and you did this. I mean, I. Sometimes you know, some sometimes being a fan of the genre and you're the one in charge. Sometimes you you overlook, I guess, overlook stuff and just start writing and 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 don't really think about this these things, thinking that everybody's gonna like it because it's Boba Fett. And and I don't know, Brian. I think you're. I think you are correct, though. I mean, the fundamental issue is the one we talked about prior, which was that the best writing for Boba Fett was given to the Mandalorian already. And they just never could find that plan B um, to, to really stabilize this character on um, in a way that really was exciting. Yeah. And I think we've given two possibilities, but they just, for whatever reason, didn't want to go that route. But I, I would have, I would have loved to have seen it. Like if he was in, if he was like an Al Capone type character, I would have loved to have seen it. You know, if he was going to be like the Clint Eastwood character from, you know, the 1960s, Sergio Leone movies. I would have loved to see it, but we didn't get either of those. And yeah. just can't. Uh, like I said, I, I I think I'd be I'd be moderately surprised if there was a season two dedicated to Boba Fett. I think you'll see him again. I think you'll see him again in yes. the other shows. But I'd be yes. surprised if he got his own seven or eight episodes next time. Yeah, like I said before, I think uh, this is setting setting up for the foundation of the future of the the, the Star Wars universe. Um, but this is sort of a low point in that um, foundation that they set up with this character. Will you be excited? I, I mean, like if I see Boba Fett in another show, I'm not going to be that excited. I'm gonna, oh, snap, that's Boba Fett. Okay. I'm more interested in the other characters like Fennec and, and Black Chris Hansen that I think they sort of underutilized with Black Chris Hansen. I, li- I like Oliphant's character. I like Oliphant's character. I'm glad he's still alive. I like Cobb yeah. I like Cad yeah. Bane. You know, like I want these guys to come back. Um, you know, the other thing I was going to say, I was disappointed that we got the Grogu Mando reunion in this episode. It's like they rushed that. everything. They, yeah, they rushed everything. Yeah. There. Yeah. Uh, I mean, let's see what happens, man. Overall, this was not a good outing for um, the Star Wars universe. Um, We have other shows that are coming out. One show that hasn't come out that's already been greenlit for a second season. One that you are very excited about, Brian, um, Andor. Yep. Uh, Yeah, I'm I'm very, very high on this show. I want to see why, because I I still don't, even though I love Rogue One, uh, I want to see what this is going to be about. Um, I'm, not, I'm not super excited about it. Not to say I'm, I, I don't want to see it, but uh, I, I definitely want to see 
what this is about. And especially now that they've announced the, and, and green lit a second season, I certainly want to see what the fuss is about that, uh, that we're getting a second season of this. Um, and it seems like that's happening a lot <laughs> with other shows, but, um, and then we have Obi-Wan Kenobi coming out. Um, oh, man. I, I know it's funny. There was a lot of rumor mill that we were going to get a Super Bowl trailer for that. And we didn't get it. Yeah. Um, so I guess people will really be on the lookout for when that's going to, when that's going to drop at this point. Um, but they haven't given, I was trying to think like, they typically haven't given trailers for the TV shows super far in advance. Of, of the release date. So I feel like we are still a little bit early for May 25th release date. I'll be thinking more March, April, be kind of maybe where you see first full trailer for that. But I definitely think like that, that I think safely is going to be a lot more consistent if nothing else than yeah. this show was. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. It's disappointing that we didn't get a, a, a at least a teaser for this. Cause it's like you're coming out in May, and not n- nothing. You got nothing but posters. That's what you got. I'm like, okay, okay. Um, but uh, okay, out of five stars, what do you give this season of uh, Boba Fett? Uh, I would give it two and a half. Um, and I probably would say that you know, one and a half of the two and a half are episodes five and six, which don't have a lot. I, and that's the thing is like those two episodes, you got to watch, like if you're a Star yeah, Wars yeah, fan, yeah, you yeah. got to watch those. And yeah, like, yeah. they are as good as anything we've seen, but they're just buried in a show. That's just not that great. So two and a half stars for me. Average. <sighs> overall. Yeah. I, I'd say two. Um, oh, there were some episodes that were, were great, but there was just sort of a letdown afterwards because the expectation of something better to come along after such a good episode, let's say, for example, episode four, I believe we enjoyed quite a bit. Um, yep. So there were those sprinkles of, of good episodes, but there was then there was something else. I mean, after... But we like the, two. We like two, like four. four then five we and really six. like five, and we love six. Which leads yeah. to three Robert Rodriguez directed <laughs> episodes. Hey, I doubt he comes back, Ryan. No. It'll be a surprise. So. It'll be a surprise if he does. Um, but yeah, that's our uh take on this season of uh the book of Boba Fett, which again people were very excited about. And also they were really talking this up. They were talking this season of Boba Fett like this was going to be something we never want. You know, one of those Tom Holland situations. <laughs> and, oh, Robert Rodriguez did that. He told yeah. us it like it crushed expectations. <laughs> like, OK. Yeah. And now it's like this is what happens when you when you say stuff like this. It better be dope. It better be dope. Um, but let's see. We got still a lot to look forward to with uh, this Star Wars universe in the next episodes of uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. We got Ando coming out. We got a lot of good stuff coming out, and hopefully, those uh, it'll be interesting what we see. Now, I- I'm curious to see what sort of episodes we're gonna get with Obi Wan because that's Brian. You can't mess that up, man. You can't mess that up. You know, I don't think so. Obi-Wan has one huge advantage that this show didn't have, which is the writers for that do not need to think hard about how to portray the main characters. They don't. Like, we know exactly who Obi-Wan needs to be at this phase of his life in this show. We know exactly who Darth Vader needs to be, I think, at this phase of his life in the universe. That is a huge advantage, right? There isn't this, we need to fundamentally remake Obi-Wan Kenobi or Anakin Skywalker in the way that they had to do with both. So I will say like the degree of difficulty in some ways is a little bit lower just because of that. I think it's higher because the expectations will be higher because of who these characters have meant to be, what they've meant to people for however many years. But I think you know, you and McGregor and Hayden Christensen, like they kind of know their way around 
at yeah. this point in terms of what, you know what I mean? And I feel like for Hayden Christensen to come back, he probably had an idea in his head of like, if I got a chance to do this, like, here's what I would do. Right. So I, I do feel like this show is coming in with a little more built in momentum yeah. uh, that Boba Fett didn't enjoy. So I, I do want to acknowledge that. Um, and so, and Deborah Chow was one of the regulars, in terms of uh, direction for the Mandalorian season one and two. So yeah, I think you're in pretty, I think you're in pretty safe hands for that one. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know in the conversation below what you guys thought of Boba, the, the book of Boba Fett um, this season. And um, what uh, did you guys think about, uh, about this season? What, what were you disappointed? Were you expecting more? Um, do you think we get a second season? Let us know in the comment section below. And uh, we'll see you next time for our review of uh, another series of either Star Wars, Marvel. We we talk about it all. Um, we'll see you next time.